So I'm John Hancock, I'm from scottishfruittrees.com, as, as here, and we're at Oatlands allotment today, and that's right by the Clyde, um, in the middle of Glasgow, and we've planted quite a number of Scottish heritage varieties of fruit trees in here. So I'm here um, with Audrey, can we come round here Audrey? And we're going to have a go at, um, I'm going to sort of show Audrey how to prune the trees. We're growing them as a kind of edible hedge along here. Now this one's Clyde side. So, the Clyde side is a, an old traditional um, cooking apple that was grown in the Clyde Valley for a long time. And I don't know whether, have you tried any of these yet? No. Not yet, no. They've been planted, what, about two years, these trees. Yeah. Good. It's Galloway Pippin. We've got a number of Galloway Pippin. Um, this one here is... This is East Lothian Pippin in here. Which is a pretty good... Pretty good apple. This one here... I'm going to have to tie this up because it's starting to peel over a bit. But this is, let's have a look, this is a Ripston Pippin. Now one of the things we're going to have to do is um, untie the labels because some of these are starting to dig into the tree. Um, so that's one of the things you have to check when you're looking after, after uh, apples. When you Putting labels on is brilliant, but it's not so good if you um, if you leave the labels on and the wire on too long and it starts to dig into the tree, so we're going to have to sort that out. Um, so let's have a look here. This is a lovely specimen of a tree. This one is, um, that's, that's a lovely East Lothian Pippin, really nice specimen tree. Um, we're, in, we're in Glasgow here, um, but it's obviously very happy. They're lovely clean fruit, really, really pretty. This is Clyde side. Very appropriate that we've got Clyde side here um, because it's um, on the banks of the Clyde. Um, so, um, it's another Galloway Pippin over here. Fiesta's a kind of Cox type apple um, and it's doing, doing nicely here. Uh, that's the same, I think. Yeah. It's also known as Red Pippin, um, and it, it has that kind of Cox type taste, it's a nice crisp eater. What, what you try and do when you're pruning, the idea is that you want to have a sort of a, a, nice, a reasonably clean stem, and then you want the tree to open up in the middle, and not get too crowded, you want lots of light and air to get into the middle of the tree, and what you don't really want is this kind of clashing in the middle so what you would do is um, when I'm working with groups I quite often um, use some bits of tie so instead of just jumping in and um, doing some pruning right away I get people to mark up the tree quite good if you can use bits of coloured ribbon. I'm just actually for the sake of this because I have this, this is tree tie stuff. So I'm just going to mark it up. But if, I'll, I'll show you where, where we're going to do the pruning. Um, so you, I think I, I'll be taking that out. Um, and then there's another bit here. Now, um, this is summer pruning. You do summer pruning, um, kind of if you don't want the trees to get too big. Summer pruning takes vigour out of the trees and encourages it to fruit more. And for these kind of, this, this sort of arrangement of trees, that's what you want to do. You don't want enormous trees, you want trees kind of covered in fruit base. Come back from the tree, have a look at it, have a look at it from different angles. How's it going to look from over here? Should we be doing something else? Um, 
and then you and, and so and you, and you can also leave it you can put the tie on and go away and do something else and then come back and have another look one of the troubles with pruning is that people quite often get into a bit of a frenzy of pruning and um, and, and prune too much and it's it's easy enough to prune too little and then do a bit more but it's not very easy to go the other way so we could um, basically um, I'll just do a, I'll just do a wee bit more um, no Audrey if you've got any questions you can always ask you understand perfectly it's fine too so I'll do that one. What time of the summer should you be doing this? Uh, well, this is August, so you'd usually be summer pruning kind of um, late July, August. Sometimes you end up a bit stuck because you've got fruit on the trees, and if you were doing the pruning, you would risk um, you know losing some of the crop. So in some cases you would leave branches on that you might want to prune out later. So you do some of the pruning and then wait until you harvest and then do the last bit if you, if you want to, to waste any of the crop, um, which is a good plan really. So I think what I'll do then, uh, I think I've got the hang of this kind of. Um, so what you're doing is trying to rationalise the middle. So what I think I'll do then is have a go at this. So I haven't marked that up, but I'm going to just shorten that stem there. When you're pruning, you should try and keep um, the, the wood that you're taking off separately and make sure you sort of dispose of it properly. You don't really want dead wood lying around at the base of the tree because it encourages disease. So it's good practice to when you're pruning these branches off um, you want a nice clean cut you want to use the sharp side of the secateurs which is that and that will go in there and again you've got that which is The advantage of doing this at this time of year as well is that by opening up the tree it means that more light will get in and you should actually get the, the fruit ripening up a bit better. Um, so it's, it's quite, you've still got a month or two for the fruit to, to, to be on the trees and to ripen. So if, you, if you've got it a bit too crowded and you take some of the new growth out, that will help the fruit to, to actually ripen up. What we've done, we've still got some new growth here, we've, but we've opened it up so that the light can get in and the air can circulate better, which is good. Um, the light is important for the fruit to ripen, and if you've got plenty of air circulation, then that keeps disease problems at bay. So that's nice and clean. And you can see, actually, if you come in really tight here, this is the start of fruit bud formation for next year. Um, there's little buds here, these are fruit buds that are uh, appearing, there's more over here. Um, so this is, this is doing nicely and it should do well next year as well. So that's really, so this is one of the white Melrose. Now there's a lot of fruit on this, so this one's a bit harder. Um, it's not a bad shape as it stands, um, so I'd be tempted um, with this one, probably not to do too much, but, it, but to demonstrate again what we can do. Um, I think you've got some branches coming over this way, which are probably eventually going to clash over with the next tree along. So I'd maybe shorten some of these down. And this one over here. You're wanting to keep the tree quite compact. Um, again, just for plant hygiene purposes, you keep the branches down. Um, and leave that one down. Okay, and then. 
kind of getting to the height that you'd want, but I think maybe leave, um, maybe shorten these three down just a wee bit. Um, that'll, that, 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 that's funny. And maybe this one. And that's probably about all we need to do with this tree. Again, by shortening some of the side branches, the effect is that we let more light and air into the middle of the tree. Well, then it's not so much a line of cordons, this, as my own patent kind of edible, edible hedge um, theory. You basically, if you plant a line of trees, even if they grow into each other um, to an extent, they do fine. But you can also plant them so that you can do a bit of um, summer pruning and keep them fairly small. This guy again is a fiesta, which is a cox type apple, um, and it does pretty well. This is the white melrose, and we've pruned this one already. This is rather a nice specimen of white melrose here. Um, And this one also is white Melrose. This is um, Thor Pippin. Which is rather handsome. Another nice Scottish um, eating apple. This is Stirling Castle. nice. Stirling Castle is a cooker, obviously from Stirling. Um, this is another Stirling Castle. And you can see that the ones where the, the, they've been pruned back a bit and the light can get them, they tend to red up and ripen up a bit better. So, um, this is the peas good. Um, peas good grows very large. And yeah, and that's that's that. What's this guy? This is Ribston again, Ribston Pippin, which is a Cox type apple and does really well. This is another Thor Pippin. This is a peas good, but there's no fruit on it. This is the Galloway Pippin. Again, this is by the banks of the Clyde here, where, and it's, um, can you see me in my, see me yeah, in my Yeah, but you're too close, so. Uh -huh. Do you want to go back a back bit? Back a bit, all right. 